In words, I can understand how is all time happening now. Well, this is another fun intersection of science and spirituality. So, quantum physics speaks to us about the space-time continuum, speaks to us about the field. Now, I am far from an expert in it, but my, my understanding from the quantum physics perspective is that all of space-time is part of this, this field, that we used to think it was all very linear. We used to think that time began over here and went like this. We thought that space began over here and, you know. But, but as our understanding of quantum physics has changed, what we realize actually is, is it's not so much about space-time as it is about the field in which space and time take place. And that field has the ability to change, shape, form. And so as the field shifts, space-time folds in, expands out. And that's, that's the quantum physics aspect of it. From the spiritual side, I don't think it's so much a matter of it's all happening right now in this instant as that it's all happening on different levels and different planes. And so, for example, it's not that you are simultaneously 5 and 85. It's that you as a being, the 5-year-old you, the 50-year-old you, the 85-year-old you, have actually always existed. This is where at the depth of spirituality, what we're taught is you're never born, you never die. There was never a time you didn't exist. There, was ne there will never will be a time you don't exist. Not that the body doesn't know time. The body absolutely knows time. And it's not all simultaneous. And the reason that you know that is as we age, there's a very predictable set of things that happen. They happen at a very predictable speed, at predictable times. You know, okay, you're going to, you know, get wrinkles at this time. You're going to approximately, you know, give or take a few years. But your, your hair is going to start to go gray at this time. You're going to start to get wrinkles at that time. You're going to start to lose bone mass at this time. I mean, oh, we, we know what happens doesn't happen to five-year-olds or 15-year-olds unless they're sick, unless something has gone awry. So that, on that level, it's not all simultaneous. This is, the, this is the wave ocean phenomenon. Every wave that ever will take place currently exists in the ocean. Every wave that has ever taken place currently exists in the ocean, right? It's all, and yet, at the moment that the wave is at its peak, there it is. It's not, it's not an illusion. If you were swimming in that wave and you didn't know how to swim and it were a big wave, you would drown and die, really not in an illusion. 10 minutes ago, you were swimming. Now you are drowned and dead. There has been an absolute passage and change in those 10 minutes on one level of existence. And yet when we turn the dial deeper, you were never born. The body has changed shape, much like the wave changed shape. The wave that drowned you is no longer in existence. By the time the lifeguards come out, and sorry for such a morbid example, but by the time, by the, time the life, lifeguards come out and drag you from the ocean, the wave is over. 
The wave has gone back to the ocean. But on one level of existence, on the most physical level of existence, it existed. You existed. There's your footprint in the sand on your way into the ocean. It's there. And when you turn the dial and go deeper, you were never born, you never died. The wave was always just the ocean. It's all just God. It's, this is like, we speak sometimes in here about the, the teaching of Advaita Vedanta, for example, that tells us everything is an illusion except God. Right? It's all God. At the highest, deepest level, the farthest point you can turn that dial, yes. Ask any sage, any rishi, any enlightened being of any religion. It's all God. Anybody who's experienced it knows it's all God. And take a knife to my skin, cut it, blood will come out. not as an illusion. Ten people watch it, ten people will tell you blood came out of her arm. A hundred people see it, a hundred people will tell you blood came out of her arm. They did not make it up. They did not invent it. It was not a mirage. It's just a different turn of, of the dial. So this is where in the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna speaks about Death and Ar I mean, Arjun says, forget it, I'm not going to fight. How can I possibly kill my family members? How can I kill my guru? Forget it, it's not worth it, I'm not going to fight. And then the whole Bhagavad Gita comes in which Lord Krishna basically says, oh really? And exactly on what level of existence are you in charge of who lives and who dies? Really? You, Arjun? You've got that power? You decide. And really? You can kill them? What is there to kill? And that's, that's what the whole Bhagavad Gita takes us through, is... The soul cannot be killed, cannot be burned with fire, cannot be dried by the wind, cannot be wet by water. There was no time it didn't exist. There will never be a time it doesn't exist on the highest level. But Lord Krishna even gives it to us on the, the one level back, on the physical plane, which is, yes, here they are in their physical bodies. And you still don't have the power to kill them. I've given them life. You don't have the power to take that away unless it is all part of this, this karmic wheel. Past, present, here's, here's the thing. They exist for those at, at once for those who can see on that level, meaning the enlightened masters. I mean, I've seen this with my guru, Puja Swamiji. He's not bound by these laws of time and space. He knows what happened to you last week, even if you were in a different country or a different city. He knows what's going to happen. He, he, he sees it as an entirety. That doesn't mean it's all happening right now. There's a difference. I guess this is the semantic difference. There's a difference between happening right now and existing right now. On this level, it's happening linearly. And here to here already exists. It's like... You're going on a journey. You're in your car. 
You're driving down the freeway. You are not simultaneously at every single exit. You've got to drive that car past exit 10, exit 11, exit 12, exit 13. You cannot be simultaneously at exit 60 where you're going. You have to move sequentially, 10, 11, 12. You, each exit a mile. You've got, to, you've got to go that way. And if you were in an airplane or a helicopter or looking at a map or in a spaceship, looking down, well, all of those exits, of course, exist at the same time. They're all here. If you have that vision, you can see it. But in your car, on your journey, exit 10 is not happening at the same time as exit 30. You, you, you know, you, you're at exit 10 at 9 in the morning, depending on your traffic. It's going to be 10, 30, 11, 12 by the time you get to exit 60. You begin with a full stomach. You ate breakfast before you got in the car. By the time you get to exit 60, your breakfast has been digested. You're hungry. So, so your, your existence is absolutely changing along the way. The fullness, the emptiness isn't existing simultaneously in you. It's happening linearly. And go high enough up and the whole thing exists at once.